Durbin, Senator Graham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Attorney General, for coming. Uh, this has been a very good discussion about some difficult issues, but um, one thing I would like to reiterate is that President Obama said the nation was at war with Al Qaeda. Do you agree with that? Oh, yes. I would just urge you to remain strong in that thought process because some people don't believe we're at war. Some people are just as patriotic as I am, but they believe we should be using the law enforcement model exclusively. And I think that is a formula for disaster. And there are some people who say you can never use Article III courts, and I disagree with them. Quite frankly, there could be times when an Article III court would be a superior form. In my view, a financier of Al-Qaeda, you might want to take them to an Article III trial because you have more charging possibilities. Every Al-Qaeda operative is not at the same level as the next, so I agree with the idea of flexible, pragmatic, and aggressive. That is your standard. So I am one senator on the Republican side who has not objected to Article III courts being used in a flexible, pragmatic, aggressive fashion. Now. When one is at war, we have to realize that the rules are different than fighting crime. Do you agree with that? that the, rules the law of war is different than normal criminal law in certain aspects. In certain aspects, yes. Yeah. When we capture someone on the battlefield under the law of war, we have no obligation to read them their Miranda rights. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, that is not typically done, but even in the Bush administration, a small, small I, number I, I of totally times I totally agree occurred. that if you're going to charge someone under domestic criminal law, you should read them their rights. I would just urge my colleagues to understand that when you're fighting a war and you capture people on the battlefield, and the whole world is the battlefield in my view, the primary goal is to find out what they know about enemy operations get them off the battlefield, then reserve prosecution decisions later. So I hope we do not criminalize the war and we will remain flexible, pragmatic, and aggressive. There are 48 people at Guantanamo Bay, I believe this administration has identified, that are going to be held under the law of war uh, on an indefinite basis because they present a national security threat but the evidence is such you would not take them to a criminal proceeding with a military commission or Article III courts. Is that correct? Yeah, I was, I'm just ch checking the numbers here. Uh, that is correct. There are 48 detainees who we have determined are too dangerous to transfer um, and not feasible for prosecution. I want to, one, stand by you in that decision. I think it is a rational, logical decision, not generated out of fear or revenge, but out of necessity. We're not fighting crime, we're not fighting the mafia, we're fighting an international, sometimes an organized organization called Al-Qaeda who has been on our destruction. And some of these people need to be held under our values, under the law of war, with due process, but we should not view what they did as a common crime, but as a military threat. And it's my understanding that every detainee, whether held under the law of war or not, will have their day in Article III court. There's a habeas proceeding available to every detainee at Guantanamo Bay. Is that correct? That is correct. And one of the judges recently granted a habeas petition to a, an alleged member of Al-Qaeda who confessed to being a member of Al-Qaeda, who swore allegiance to Al-Qaeda in the 90s, but the judge decided to grant the habeas petition because the government could not prove on the day of capture in 2001 they were still a member of Al-Qaeda. It is my view, Mr. Attorney General, that we need a, to reform our habeas procedures and that a presumption should follow detainee that once you're a member of Al-Qaeda, proven that on the day of capture, there would be a presumption that you're still a member of Al-Qaeda and the court could hear evidence otherwise. This is just an example of why the Congress, in my view, ladies and gentlemen, needs to get more involved. So hang, hang, hang firm, stand strong, be fair, be aggressive, be pragmatic, but not, do not lose sight that we're at war. Now, when it comes to confinement facilities, I share the President's concern that Guantanamo Bay has become an iconic image used against our troops in the field, and it would be preferable, in my view, to have a new facility that starts over and not tainted by the past of Guantanamo Bay, even though it is a well-run, secure facility now. And I would like to work with you That's in, in that regard. And I'm losing the audience, apparently, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> now, when it comes to future captures, where would we put someone 
that was captured in Yemen that we believe to be, be a member of Al-Qaeda, where would they be detained? Well, that's one of the issues I think that we have to, we have to wrestle with. Um, there are, um, it, it depends on, you know, what we ultimately want to do. Uh, Mr. And since my time is short, we're basically a nation without a viable jail. This president is probably not going to send new people to Guantanamo Bay. Is that a fairly accurate statement? That is certainly something we would try to avoid. Right. And if you send these people to Bagram Air Base, you're going to bring the Afghan government down. So to my colleagues who think that we can close Guantanamo Bay and send them to Afghanistan and the Afghan government become the American jailer, I think you're making a serious mistake in the war on terror. Do you agree with that? Yeah, I think we have to come up with options, and I think we need to uh, work with the Congress to try to develop what those options might be. This is music to my ears because I think we do also because we're fighting a war. We don't have a viable jail. Some people say use Guantanamo Bay as safe and secure. I would argue listen to the commanders, see if we can find a better jail that would meet the needs of this unique war on terror. So at the end of the day, uh, I think the decision to prosecute KSM in civilian court was a mistake. The fact that you're being flexible, pragmatic, and aggressive is the right track to take. And I would urge you to work with the Congress to see if we can fashion detention policy that allows us to be at war within our values, allows you to use Article III courts when appropriate, but never lose sight of the fact that if you're a member of Al-Qaeda, you haven't violated our immigration laws. You're a continuing threat to the world, and the idea of holding someone with due process who's a member of Al-Qaeda uh, until they die in jail is okay with me because we've done it in every other war. But this is a war without end, so I'm willing to do more than we've done in past wars as long as we don't lose sight of the fact we're at war. Thank you for your service, and I look forward to working with you as we solve these very difficult problems. Right. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Graham. Senator Schumer.